what's going on everybody welcome to the best mountain farm and we are in the mountains so you can see it is flurrying there's some snow up high and it's just going to keep getting colder and uh snowing more and more as we go so i was working on getting everything cleaned up in here uh but it's cold and nasty and it's my birthday, so I'm going to do something I want to do. Which still involves work, but work I enjoy. So these oak beams that I found while we were cleaning. Well, I knew they were here. But there's three of them. And you can see they are they were pulled out of an old house about 40 years ago by Papa Hugh. And... Uh, they had set, I guess about almost 40 years ago, they had set right here ever since then. And so when I was going through the stack of lumber yesterday, I found it, or the day before yesterday, I found them. And what I am going to do with them is I am going to make some shelves. So I'm going to take these old, nasty, beat up boards. I think they are chestnut too, uh, real chestnut and make them not look brand new, but uh, still gonna leave the age and make a cool set of shells. So I'm gonna get some stuff set up here and then show you how we're gonna do that. Okay, so dad pulled them out of an uh, old house like 40 years ago, but uh, I'll have to double check with them on the age. I know this wood, has been cut and put in an old house well over 100 years ago. Uh, so it has seen some use. Not sure exactly what it was used for, but you can see the staple holes there. And, uh, you know, on this piece, you can see see where they've done a little bit of shaping on it. And uh, you can see some little bit of old termite damage and whatnot, but... I think that's just gonna to add to the character. The first thing I have to do, whenever you're working with any salvaged wood, is very important. Unless you won't want to spend a lot of extra money. So this is a pinpoint metal detector. You can see it's gonna pick up if there's any metal. Because I don't really feel like killing planer knives uh, or any blades. So you can see it's pretty sensitive. It's gonna pick up any little pieces of metal. So all these holes, everywhere I see that there's, nope, that's. Looks like it's all clear. This is definitely an essential, essential piece of equipment if you're going to do anything with old reclaimed barn wood or any wood that's been cut off of a farm. Because you never know, even if you're just milling the tree, you never know when a fence has been built uh, using that tree as a fence post 100 years ago. And I have had it happen, and it is not fun. All right. So, the next thing we're going to do here is, the other thing that will kill planer knives is all this loose dust and buildup. So I'm going to find something here real quick, a brush or something to go over and get as much of this dust and stuff as I can off so that we don't dull the planer knives uh, to where they won't cut real nice. All right. So I was looking for a, a wire brush, but this will get the majority of it off. Get 
the planer set up here. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to set this planer to where it is barely going to skin the surface of the wood. Because I want to leave the circle saw marks on the circle saw. So because these pieces are much heavier than the oak I was planing, uh, I've got to set make sure my height on my roller bed uh, or my roller stand there is correct so that I have a helping hand running this through. And that looks about right. Now this is the fun part. I love this part, it's my favorite part. This is where you first get to see what you're working with and what the wood looks like. said I wasn't gonna go down too deep you know I was gonna leave the uh, some of the marks and stuff on it but I just couldn't uh, I had to get this this is wormy chestnut and this is just absolutely phenomenal I did leave a little bit of it here I'm gonna leave the termite damage so oil we're going to use will harden that up and that'll be on the bottom anyway. Uh, or actually, since they're going to be up high, I might put that on the top. But, I mean, that's just absolutely gorgeous. And you could hear how insanely hard that chestnut was. Honestly, after running these three pieces through, uh, when I'm done, I'll probably have to sharpen and replace the planer knife because just to give you an idea, you can see how big the shavings are from pine or poplar. And generally the harder the wood, the finer the shaving. And that's almost like dust because this is so hard. All right, well, let's uh, get these other ones ran through the planer.
you can see the difference, especially with this piece sitting there next to it. And just night and day. Run this one more and uh, we'll be ready to keep going. And that's that's just plain. I haven't even started sanding and it has no finish on it. So pretty phenomenal already. Uh no, not pretty. Extreme. How pretty. And you can definitely tell this is just a because these things are heavy. This is probably as heavy as two, probably three. Uh, pine birds of the same size. Uh, each one of these probably weighs somewhere around 35 pounds each. Whew. About to wear it now. All right, so our next project, or our next thing we have to do is pick our sides we want to use, because uh, all these are bowed a little bit. So I want the back side to uh, mount flush against the wall. So kind of like I did with my oak trim, I'm gonna get my straight edge here. Take what side I think is the prettiest. Then I'm gonna lay my straight edge against it. And It's not horrible. Uh, part of this, you can see a little bit of a gap there. Uh, might just be able to get this with the joiner if it wasn't so heavy. Uh, but we'll give it a shot. So we'll hook the joiner up, run it through our joiner since it's nowhere near as crooked as the oak, and see if we can't get a nice flat edge um, to go against the back side of the wall. Whew. Good thing it's cold out.
jumped the gun a little bit. We are not quite done down here yet. So I need some brackets. What I'm gonna do is take one of the, or a couple of the two by fours. Maybe they might be a different kind of wood, but it's okay. Uh, they'll still be pretty. And plane these down so I can make brackets uh, for my shelves. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a little round over on the front of these just because they're sharp and I'll get some splinters. It'll make it a little easier to sand and work with. Might make it look a little bit better too.
So we've got everything up here. Uh, I got cold. So I decided to go up here since we only have a little bit of sanding to do. And all we're really doing is just, because I want it to be a little bit, um, you know, rustic looking. So we're just going to go over it with some 220 and just hit, just hit it to make it just look just a little bit better. Everybody, this really is my favorite part. So, what I'm going to use on these is boiled linseed oil. Oil's always my favorite way to finish wood. Um, chestnut oil, tongue oil, linseed oil. Um, I personally don't think anything looks better than oil. No artificial, no artificial kind of uh, sealer. The oil is a little bit higher maintenance. Copper, hush. The oil is a little bit higher maintenance because um, you do have to, you know, put extra oil on it. But the nice thing is, unlike some polyurethanes and whatnot, where you have to strip it all the way down or sand it really rough, uh, if when your oil finish needs redone, all you really need to do is scrub a little bit with uh, some steel wool and put oil right back on it. So my final cut would be uh, pure boiled linseed oil, but to thin this down to make sure that it um, Copper copper wants to play with the other dogs and they don't want to play um, And it soaks as much into the wood as possible. I'm gonna be mixing Copper hush All right, I had to threaten copper But as I was saying uh, to, to dilute it a little bit to make it really soak in good on the first couple coats. You can mix it one-to-one -one with mineral spirits, um, turpentine, uh, uh, or paint thinner. I'm using mineral spirits. I wanted to use turpentine, that's my favorite to use, but they didn't have any. And I know this is gonna soak up quite a bit. So I'm just, I'm gonna go ahead and mix about a half a cup here, and then I'll just keep mix, mix, mixing as I need to.
right everybody well here is you can see the finished results and I'm probably going to end up putting maybe two three more coats on it. I like to let everything dry in between let it totally soak in so that is going to wrap up this episode I think they turned out really pretty and a couple more coats of oil they're really going to be pretty oh quick note make sure when you use boiled linseed oil uh, I'm gonna put this rag in here where it won't hurt anything but you want to make sure um, you don't want to wad that up and just leave it laying on the ground uh, it creates heat when you do that and it can spontaneously combust it's been known to catch fire and start fire so if you're using boiled linseed oil always make sure and throw the rag away um, but let it dry before you wad it up so leave it out open so that uh, all the chemical reaction can finish and it won't be it won't be uh, it won't get hot all right and on that note it is getting rather wintry and I want to I'm going out with a friend. What you think, Copper? What you think, Copper? Uh -huh. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> None of these guys have ever seen snow. What you think about that stuff, huh? What you think about that stuff? Yeah, wait till tomorrow. <laughs> oh, it's just yaw yaw. -ya. All right, guys. Well, I'm going out with a friend tonight for my birthday, and uh, got to drive about an hour. And I don't want to do it when the roads are bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and go, so I don't have to drive anymore tonight. And uh, yeah, my birthday. So that's going to be it. Make sure and like, subscribe, and share so that you can see the rest of the shelves. On Next time, I'm gonna put, in between the next couple days, I'm gonna put the last coats of oil, and then we're gonna get our supports uh, cut, and we're gonna get them mounted, and I'm gonna show you guys a lot of the cool stuff I have. Uh, some things like my great-grandfather's um, catcher's mitt and baseball bat, and face mask from where he played uh, at Colby College before it was Western North Carolina and a bunch of other cool odds and ends and that's one reason i wanted these in here so i could have a place to display some of the stuff that i've collected over the past 30 years and put in boxes i haven't had anywhere to put it all right guys thanks for watching i'll see you next time